survived the nightmare that is San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> and we are here to bring you all sorts of scary news, including my Blair Witch t-shirt. What? What? Yeah. Yes. How I, wonderful. Thank you. I, I cut the neck out myself. I thought it was the so woods. Proud. Ah, we'll get to that, John <laughs> Schnepp. To my left, let's welcome our panel. To my left, we have Ms. Perry Nemeroff. I am so jealous of this t-shirt right now. I have that t-shirt, but I'm nowhere near as artsy as fartsy as this lady. So if I wore mine, it'd be like a smock on me and it'd be awful. So it I'm going to bring I'm gonna bring you my t-shirt and you have to cut it and make it pretty for I, me. I will. It was a it was a Blair Witch dress before I got <laughs> to it. So basically I cut it in half as well. But thank you, Tim Lee. Yes, I just name dropped a little for giving me your t-shirt in the street. Uh, and to Perry's <laughs> left is Mr. John Schnepp. Yeah, I don't have like a Blair Witch t-shirt. Just got this exclusive Eric Powell Slayer shirt what? from Comic-Con. What up? What up? No what big else? deal. No big deal. No big deal. And to my right is Mr. Mark Riley. Hi, Collider Nightmares. How is everyone? And hey, hey I want to give a special shout out on the meet and greet. Oh. So many fans of Collider Nightmares came up to me and said how much they love the show. So thank you so much. That is so awesome to hear. Yes, I second that. It was yeah. so nice to meet all of you horror nerds out there. Mm -hmm. You all made me so happy. So thank you. Nice to meet you. Yay. Yay. Hopefully we'll be able to do another one of those yeah. again sometime soon. Maybe around Halloween. I like Ooh. the sound of that. All right, we'll one. work on it. We'll work on it. All right, let's dive into, on this hot, sweaty day, our fresh meat. Mmm, yes. delicious. Oh, fresh yeah. meat. Fresh all right, meat. so we already uh, previewed it a little bit. Uh, my shirt was the uh, was the opening act, but after my Tons of positive buzz coming off the teaser trailer for our director Adam Wingard and writer Simon Barris' latest, The Woods. This weekend at San Diego Comic Con, it was revealed that the Lionsgate release was actually a sequel to the 1999. Fact checked. Whoa. There Fact it is. Yep. Yep. Independent hit, The Blair Witch Project. Um, so, guys, that was this huge reveal that came this weekend. Um, I personally am very excited that I do not have to worry about spoiling it anymore. Cat mm. is out of the bag. So, we'll start with you, Mark Riley. You know, yes. you and I filmed a reaction video when the news dropped. And now that you've had a few days to process, how are you feeling? Give it to me. <laughs> I want to see this movie now. I am so excited. You were all, a lot of you were in the room when we were working at, uh, for Collider at Comic-Con. I squealed like a girl, I, and I don't take it back. I love this news so much. I love that they surprised us. I love that it came at Comic-Con. I love that Adam Wingard is doing this. So give it to me now, please. Yeah, you know, the surprise element is just so, so cool. For me, aside, yes, the Wonder Woman trailer was amazing. There was a lot of great uh, Marvel announcements sure, sure. that came out of it. But for me, this was like the biggest surprise out of everything. And the way they pulled it off was amazing. Now, Perry, you were there at that Comic-Con screening uh, where you walked in and mm. the woods was everywhere. But it was. And then... And then it wasn't. And this was, it was this was really one of the greatest Comic-Con experiences I've ever had. And just for all of you, who are kind of pissed that you can't be in on the surprise when you first see the movie, don't worry, because this was just really a great marketing tool. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily affect your reaction to the movie. There's not like a moment in the movie that is spoiled now that you know that it's Blair Witch. It's still gonna play perfectly well, so don't worry about that. But what they did at Comic-Con was they had everyone come into the theater for this screening. There were the woods posters everywhere. And I mean, in all the light boxes, there was this gigantic, you could see a picture on my Instagram, a gigantic, like pretty substantial standee in the middle and it was all lit up and all pretty in the woods and then everybody in the aisles that was working the screening they were all in their black the woods t-shirts when the lights came on after the movie was over everyone had these red ones on we walked out into the theater all of the posters had be been changed to Blair Witch that whole standee was now a Blair Witch thing it was just such it sounds really silly and like simple but it was such a nice touch that just made everyone exponentially more hype than they already were because it's also a good movie which is one of the cool things about this whole thing yeah if all this marketing were for were for a really crappy movie I mean that would I think almost be disappointing but the movie is great and to echo your point Perry you know when you sit down in the, to, for the movie you figure out in less than five minutes that this is a Blair Witch movie I mean this is not something where it hits you like a mm -hmm. ton of bricks 20 minutes in you're very aware the first bits of dialogue yeah. say that uh, he's uh, Heather's, Heather's brother. brother exactly so there you have it yeah so just so you know Perry is absolutely right. All right, John Schnepp. Now, 
what were you, what was your reaction when you heard about this? Because, oh, you, I've been telling everybody, mm -hmm. when we talked about this Woods poster, right. you were sitting over there and you are like, yeah, I like it, it's creepy, it's giving me like Blair Witch vibes, and I was like, mm. <laughs> So you knew, I didn't. I knew, but Josh I yeah. did not know. No, but I saw the little stick, the little twig guy, you know, the twig people in the poster, I was like, mm, it's kind of Blair Witchy, and so is the trailer, whatever. <laughs> uh, totally guessed it. <laughs> You did. You totally called um, it. But uh, is the Woods still coming out? Because I really want to see that movie. <laughs> You're no, gonna have I, to wait I, for the I can't wait to see this Blair Witch Three, especially knowing the two uh, the two super weirdos involved. You know, they're horror nuts. I'm sure they're gonna bring another element, another level to what the original like run around in the woods with twigs and screaming and stuff. I'm sure this has got that plus a whole bunch more. So that's what I'm hoping for. I wanna see them take that thing that was like changed horror that, that you wouldn't have paranormal activity if you didn't have this, like I'm lost in the woods running around with screaming and the person in the corner. Now oh. what happens? Now yeah. I wanna know what happens next. So that's, it's pretty exciting. Well, and so Perry, you did a, um, a non-spoilers review after, after you saw the film and I've seen the film as well, but just for some of our audience who's watching now, what are some, what's the biggest uh, takeaway point that you would like to sort of let them know? My, one of my favorite things about this movie, because I've, I had known about the, the big reveal, so before I went to Comic-Con and I knew I was seeing The Woods, I went and I rewatched the original, and I rewatch it every once in a while, but I haven't seen it all that recently. You know, I was in the dark in my apartment alone, and I really did forget how that gets in your head, and it's one of those movies that, you know, makes you afraid to turn off the lights and go to bed. This has that same feeling. I just, it's the same type of scared feeling that I had watching the, watching the original I had in this theater while I was watching this. And they do, I don't even want to call it uh, Blair Witch 2.0. It's more like Blair Witch 1.5, you mm -hmm. know? It's like they maintain just enough of the original, but they still adhere to the times and add some new cameras and all that kind of stuff and, and spice up the mythology a little, but yes. not, not too much. So it really is the perfect balance between being a Blair Witch sequel of sorts and also still feeling like that movie that sparked this whole thing to begin with. Yeah, I agree. I mean, one of the things that I liked so much about this was that it it's not a reboot. Um, but you could see the movie and never have seen Blair Witch Project mm -hmm. and completely enjoyed it. It's also, it's a direct sequel, but it doesn't feel like you're going to have sequelitis. You know what I mean? Like, Good. it really does stand on its own. And like you said, Perry, it adds to the things that you love from the first film. The other thing I want to mention is, so, uh, you know, we watch enough horror movies and enough new horror movies where I... I gotta say, I'm so burned out on found footage. Like, I'm so burned out on it, and, and it's enough to make me go, ugh, really? But with that being said, this movie absolutely works the way that the story is told. It absolutely, absolutely works with the found footage cameras, and they are so clever by using all of this modern technology, whether it's a drone, or mm. whether it's a standalone camera, whether it's an earpiece camera, or a handheld camera. I mean, it's very, very clever how they make it actually feel authentic, but still cool. get all of that coverage. It's also some very crisp shots, Definitely. too. Like, they're especially beautiful shots. It's mm. not like fuzzy frame shit, like super shaky cam. It's, it's pretty easy to watch. Absolutely. Hey, I got a question. Yeah. Do you have to have seen Blair Witch Book of Shadows to see this <laughs> I knew one? That was no, I just, no, I knew no, you were no do more it. Blair Witch 2 talk. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, let's all just pretend that we never saw Book of Shadows. But yeah. yeah, and I will say too, the third act is the climax of this film is incredibly intense. Is. And uh, I think horror fans are gonna be are going to be very Production satisfied. The design is oh. on point throughout yeah. this entire so, film. Okay. There's also an interview I did with uh, Simon and Adam up on the YouTube channel right now. So if you want to know a little more about about how they made this movie and how they maintain the secret and all that fun stuff, go watch that too. Mm. Wonderful. So coming in September, don't miss Blair Witch. I gotta stop calling it the woods. Like my head mm. is I'm like in my review yeah. and I'm like, no, I, I'm gonna keep saying that. I know I've I? been trained. I've been trained. Okay, let's move on to some other independent filmmakers. Uh not really a horror movie, but hailing from writer director Ty West, the filmmaker who brought you House of the Devil and the Innkeepers. His latest is In a Valley of Violence, a violent western dark comedy starring Ethan. Ethan Hawke and John Travolta. Produced by Blumhouse, the film will hit theaters this October and fans have recently been treated to the first trailer. All right, so Perry, you have seen this movie. I have. And uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking about Ty West, had been asking about this movie, so that's why we're covering it here. How would you say that this fits into Ty West's, you know, overall canon? This is very, very different. 
And I'm not saying this because this movie is anything like The Guest, but to me it feels like Ty West stepping away from horror and trying something different in the same way that uh, Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett did with The Guest and making that more of an action thriller versus a straightforward horror movie. This is... It's a, um, how to describe it? During my interview with Ty at South by Southwest, which is where this movie premiered, I kept wanting to say like horror genre this and that. And it, it definitely is not straightforward horror. It's, it's a really unique mix of comedy, Western and and violence, not necessarily horror, but kind of uh, horrific kind violence, of, maybe like, horror comedy style uh -huh. violence, uh, except maybe like one or two scenes. It's pretty freaking brutal. But if you watch this trailer, I have a quote, and I'm so happy because I'm really hyped about this. I get really excited when a filmmaker that I know and love his work so much does something so different and steps so not just different for Ty West, but different for the genre mm -hmm. overall for for all these genres that he kind of mashes up here. He does something that so unexpected because even though this I think this is a fine trailer this trailer does not tease well enough how well he uses comedy and western mm. in okay. this movie cool. es especially comedy there's some moments in this movie that are laugh out loud funny and especially towards the third act of the film and John Travolta in this he is so fantastic I love John Travolta he's so good I'm, I'm so ready Riley you look shocked no no it, what I was gonna say was I love it when uh, when a trailer surprises me when I haven't heard anything about a movie and this trailer did that for me and especially John Travolta he stood out for me and I really noticed a lot of the, the, the humor elements in it so I was like, horror aside, this looked very interesting. And not knowing anything about it, just hearing your praise uh, about it, Perry, I'm like, great. I, when, when is it coming out? I want to see it. Yeah. It looks good. Well, it'll be here in October. Mm -hmm. John Schnepp, are you ready for a comedy violent Western? Yeah, from Ty West, for sure. I mean, I loved House of the Devil as much as I love The Innkeepers. And those are totally two different films, even though they're horror films. So he's a talented director. I know he's been wanting to do a bunch of different things. I, I know he was like working on a science fiction film for a little while, like to, nice. to place on a satellite. I don't know what happened to that. But then this kind of just showed up. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm all for it. I don't know if it's going to beat Blazing Saddles, Ty West, <laughs> but I'm all for it. I can't wait to see it. Uh, Perry, how would you, would you compare it at all to Bone Tomahawk? No, okay, absolutely not. So let's not. talk this about is, that. This is not Bone Tomahawk. Bone Tomahawk is, you know, a dark, violent right. movie. And everything those characters go through in that movie is very serious and intense. <sighs> this, on the other hand, is... You know, things that Ethan Hawke is the main character and it's about his issue. James Ransone, there's another name drop I want to do right here because he is also excellent in this movie. And it, it focuses, obviously, if you watch a trailer, on a little issue that happens between the two of them and, and them kind of butting heads in a certain respect. And some of the things that happens to Ethan Hawke's character is pretty horrific. It's a, it's a couple terrible things happen to him. But I would not call this horror in the sense that Bone Tomahawk is horrifying. All right. All right, fair enough. Coming in October, so get ready. All right, moving on. After Aliens celebrated its 30th anniversary this weekend at Comic-Con, fans are growing even more excited for Ridley Scott's latest, the sequel to Prometheus titled Alien Covenant. Star Michael Fassbender, who has returned to work with Scott on the sequel, recently previewed the film's tone, telling Collider's own Frosty what fans can expect for the movie, saying, it's much scarier than Prometheus, but it's got the same sort of scope as Prometheus. It's kind of got more... Uh, of the sort of thriller, imminent disaster feel that Alien had. So it's kind of a beautiful meeting of both of those films. I'm really excited to see it. I think it's going to be super scary, number one. And then again with the massive scope of Prometheus. Once it starts and gets the ball rolling, it doesn't let up. And it's really going to bring the chills to cinema. So, um, Schnepp, now I know you talked about this a little bit on Movie Talk this morning. But but I, you're a lifelong Alien fan. Sure. Um, were you a Prometheus fan? I, I really loved Prom I do Prometheus too. as well. You know, haters come at me. I don't care. I, I really enjoy it. I'm with you guys. I like um, Prometheus too. Yeah. So, you know, there was, a, I'm not saying this is like an Oscar winning movie. It had some plot issues and a few things, but overall, I thought it was a really good science fiction horror film. And I'm really looking forward to Covenant even more so because it's going to take, you know, the head in the in the duffel bag, what happened to uh, Nomi Rapice's character. Here's like, I don't know how many years have elapsed. With this new uh, with this new ship, the Covenant coming to the Paradise Island that the engineers are you know are coming from. I don't know what kind of xenomorphs are going to be in it. Is it going to be the original Giger aliens? Is it going to be somewhere in between the creature that we saw in, in uh, Prometheus and some new version? I don't know anything really about 
the movie or the plot or anything. And I like it that way. I just can't wait to see it. And that Fassbender is saying it's kind of a mixture of the original Alien and Prometheus, where we get the, both the big, high-budget spectacle, which is what Prometheus had, with the scares and the freaky tension of the original Alien. I mean, I'm all on board. Even without Fassbender saying that stuff, I, but him just saying it, helps add a little flavor to it. So. Yeah, I, I'm with you. And I think, too, I love the idea. You know, I was, when we were doing the press for Aliens this weekend, mm -hmm. talking to Sigourney Weaver was, one of the things she pointed out was, you know, Ridley's movie is a haunted house film, which I think a lot of people agree sure. that a, the first Alien is more of a horror movie and Aliens is more of an action adventure movie. And, um, I, but I love the idea of Ridley Scott himself getting back into more of a horror genre space. You know, science fiction is obviously, um, uh, can be scary. It can also be adventure. It can be a blend of both. But I kind of love the idea of Fassbender saying it's going to be scary. That's music to my ears yeah. for this for this world. Perry, you're not so keen on Prometheus. No, I'm actually okay with Prometheus. Okay. I I don't love it as much as I like Alien and Aliens, mm -hmm. and I definitely felt that way pretty strongly when I walked out of my first screening. But I've watched it a couple times since then, and it's one of those things that does get better mm -hmm. and better the more yeah. I watch it. And watching it with just the mentality of, oh, is, is this horror, is this scary? Even though it isn't a haunted house film quite like Alien, there's some pretty horrific scenes in this movie. Like my favorite is when is when they're exploring and that creature comes and attack and wraps himself around one guy's arm and in mm. the house. Oh my god, that, that is a, a mm -hmm. terrifying sequence. So I I like the idea. It's still tough to tell because it, you know, super scary. Like, what does that even mean? Sure. And as we talk about on the show all the time, super scary can mean something different to every single person. So as long as this super scary does mean more like the original film, I'm all for it. We'll see. I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark Riley, um, are you looking forward to, as somebody who liked the first Prometheus movie, would you be interested in it veering into slightly more scary territory? Well, absolutely, because I think that's what audiences were promised when you heard Ridley Scott was revisiting the alien world and so I think the reason Prometheus gets a bad rap is that it wasn't alien mm -hmm. it, it and it wasn't scary like there are scary moments but it wasn't the alien movie that we wanted I think I and but see I respect that because Ridley Scott went and said I'm telling a different story it's a great sci-fi movie I I enjoyed the hell out of Prometheus so this is great because I want more scary. Aliens, to me, Alien at least, is a horror movie mm -hmm. in space. It's Jaws in space. That was the whole reason it was made. So I want that back, and this is promising to me. I, I know nothing about it, like you said, Schnepps, and I'm kind of like tuning it out because I want to be really surprised. But what makes me excited when he compare, when he says it's like horror elements of Alien in the big, grand world of Prometheus, mm -hmm. I want to see aliens and engineers, and I want to yeah. see them fight. Yeah. I want to know why they're, what's going on there. Like, why do we ultimately get to that ship um, where the engineer has the chest burst uh, right. happen? So, this is just great to hear because I'm such a huge fan of Alien. It's one of the best horror movies ever made, and so if we can get a little bit more of that, I'll be very happy. Yeah, I agree. I, I want to see. Uh, I want. I'm with you. I want to see the the xenomorphs and the and the engineers go at it. Those engineers oh, yeah. are just creepy to me. Yeah, they're they're really, yeah. really upsetting looking. I don't. There's something about them that's just upset, You know. But we I'm, still have one more prequel. There's Covenant, then one other one before yeah. we get to right. Aliens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. The yeah. trilogy. The, yeah. Right. The Prometheus trilogy. I'm on board. I don't care. Yeah. I'm with you. Come at me, haters. I'm I'm mm. ready. I can take it. All right. Let's move on to our fav My favorite segment to say. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Okay. Yes. Let it all out yeah. today. Why we did it, it guys. We yeah. did it again. Comic Con. That's uh. our release from Comic Con. It was all too much. Just let it that's, out. that's all we needed. I should have done that when I got home. <laughs> you just sort of got home and screamed. God. What's in the box? Neighbors are like, go to bed, weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So first up, Stranger Things. You guys keep <sighs> tweeting at us about it. Yes, we know. Oh it's God. so good. We're trying to work out um, a review for that, by the way. So stay tuned. It's not yeah. official yet. But in the meantime, Stranger Things has become Netflix's latest phenomenon. While while a second season of the fan favorite following the kids of Hawkins, Indiana has not officially been greenlit. Guys, it Seriously. has not officially been <laughs> 
greenlit. Wait, do I you, thought we just saw. Uh, we watched all of season two already. Officially, oh, that's right. We did. Yeah, we totally oh. binge watched season two. They finished it. They sent it to us. They we totally like, saw yeah, it. Yeah. We already working on season three. Yeah, season three yeah. is what they're working. Yeah, season Not four. Not officially been greenlit. <laughs> but with that being said, obviously <laughs> the Duffers are talking about what their plans for season two might be. Sean Levy is talking about what his plans for season two and beyond might be, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So Sean Levy, who directed episodes alongside the Duffers, recently told Slash Film. The answer is yes and yes. We are definitely hopeful to go seven more seasons, and the plan is to continue with this set of characters while introducing a few critical key new ones next season. So I'll just say that a lot of the big mysteries get answered at the end of season one, but we are very much uh, kind of unearthing new problems and questions that merit future stories and future investigation in the most enjoyable way. We're in love with our cast and our characters. So that's very exciting. And then, um, and then of course, the Duffers told Variety that they have the this 30-page uh, this document quote has been quoted like all over yeah, the yeah. trades, which I find hilarious. This th I want a t-shirt that says 30-page document right? on it. But basically <laughs> what the Duffers said is that they have a 30-page document that they've been working from that actually works out and explains the upside Probably down. like a picture book, and there's one sentence <laughs> on Hang each on page. Hang on a second. Like How many pages, pages is this? 30, 30 pages, pages. A 30-page document? A 30-page document. I want a t-shirt of that. <laughs> So guys, um, we're we're all uh, from more or less finished, caught up, uh, getting caught up on Stranger Things. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, for me, and I'll start it off. For me personally, I want to see more Stranger Things. However, because mm. I'm, I'm not going to try and spoil anything, because I know, Schnapp, you're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like the this arc and the, these stories that we were introduced to, for the most part, wrap up really beautifully yep. obviously there's a little there's a major cliffhanger that if you've seen it you know what it is mm -hmm. um, and there are little hints and and you know little um, uh, Easter eggs that are dropped in those last final moments that lead you to believe that there is definitely more going on but I don't know for me if I was gonna come back to stranger things I don't necessarily want it to pick up right where this story left off which I think is why they keep saying they would call it a sequel mm -hmm. it's not like a season two so it wouldn't necessarily continue Continue, but do you guys like directly continue from season one? But do you guys have any thoughts on that? I mean, if they're gonna do that where it directly continues, they gotta pull the trigger on this fast and lock those kids in fast because right. we'll find out later one of them is already cast in another movie and kids grow up super quick. Right. So if they're gonna make this a direct continuation, they better get moving. Yeah. But at this point, because I wanted to binge this so badly and then Celebration mm -hmm. and Comic Con happened. Yep. Between the two nights that we've been back since Con, I have been binge watch crazy and this is the first show in a really long time where I've had that super sad feeling at the end where not necessarily I'm sad that the stories, I just miss spending time with the characters. Mm. Oh, and yeah. like even looking at this, like I wanna hang out with those kids again, you know? So at this point I will take just about anything they'll give me and I will probably be happy with it. Thinking though, you know, realistically and logically and just with the thought in mind that I don't want them to spoil something that I now love so much. One of the best things about Stranger Things is that it's a character driven story and it's not all that much about, you know, what is the upside down? What's really going on here? Let's figure out why this and this and this exists. The second you open the door to a second season, you need to start taking steps forward. And when a show has a sci-fi element, it runs the risk of spiraling out of control. So, you know, I've read quotes where they say they want to keep it, you know, from the character's perspective, exploring this whole situation. I think if that is firmly in their minds when they're moving forward, building this world, fine. But, oh, just just keep it pure and don't overcomplicate it because that's one of the best parts of the series. Sure, that's fair. All right, Schnepp, now you, you haven't quite finished yet, but what are your yep. thoughts on more? I still have a tasty three episodes oh, to enjoy. I'm kind of but, jealous. Uh, I know, because I, I knew Perry's like, I don't have any left. I have three. <laughs> Damn. But anyway, I'm kind of jealous of these guys because they got to, they know what happens at the end. I, and I don't, but I can't wait. I was just trying to watch all of it yesterday, but I, I just too tired. I love Elle, the like scanners yeah. girl. It's like, I just think she's a great actress. So yeah. It's like she's all of great. them, all the kids are great actors. Um, Boy, uh, so I don't really know. Like you guys have seen the whole season, like how it all wraps up, and I don't know where they're gonna go. So for myself, if they do a Stranger Things sequel, I personally would love it. Even though I haven't seen how this one ends, is for them to jump to another town, jump somewhere else, and not have these people in the cast. 
and let that rock for eight episodes, maybe even do two seasons like you're jumping around, mm-hmm. then come back to them in four years. I mm. agree, actually. I, you know, even before before all this sort of talk and, and everybody really kind of caught on, for me, I sort of wanted Stranger Things to be an anthology series. And it's not because I don't love spending time with these characters. And it's, you know, I, I do. I love these characters. But I feel like, again, for me personally, season one just wrapped up kind of perfectly. Mm. Just enough unanswered to where there was a little bit of mystery, but enough where I was satisfied. And I was like, okay, we're all set. And maybe we come back where the kids are now teenagers and they've grown up a little bit and the sister is in college now and things have changed or what you know I don't know I could go on and on but Riley how about you where do you stand on a follow-up you guys are crazy we (laughs) got to stick with the no no we absolutely (laughs) have to stay with these guys this is one of the most brilliant series ever made and I am so in with all the kids we 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 have the cliffhanger I need to know what happens there I need to know more the relationship between Winona Ryder's character and I'm and uh Please tell me his name. Will. Will. Or Hopper. Uh, no, no uh, the chief. Hopper. 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 Thank you. It's so, I mean, I had tears in my eyes. Like, I want to stay with them. Give me all the Stranger Things with them. Seven seasons, whatever it is. Wow, because seven seasons, yeah. I think I there's. I think you meant several, not seven, right? Yeah, several. Seven. Yeah, you said seven, I, but I, I saw seven several. Well. But now yeah. that she said seven, I but want I'll take seven seasons. That's what I'm I saying. want seven seasons. I don't even remember. I'll take the seven seasons. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the several seasons. Yes. I'll take whatever you're going <laughs> to give me because the Duff for brothers did something some and they hooked me and I care about these kids I care about these characters looking at it though I can totally see why you would want an anthology series mm. um, but just the way they set up this story there there's something weird about that lab it's it's in that town so something more is going there the upside down was created there maybe I don't know maybe we could jump around I'm totally for that too but I just want I need to have these kids with me mm. like I want to see them grow up and and deal with this and will I, I mean I you know we we need to know more about that mm-hmm. and uh, I come on I just give it to me Duffers come on all right 30 uh, page document seven 30 seasons. page seven document se- 30 page document seven seasons put it on a t-shirt all right moving <laughs> on this week at comic-con it was announced that Rihanna would be playing the iconic role of Marion Crane originated by Janet Lee and Alfred Hitchcock's Alfred Hitchcock psycho on the fifth and final season of Bates Motel said executive producer Producers Carlton Cuse and Carrie Aaron, we wanted to thrust the iconic role into a tem- contemporary spotlight and redefine it in a meaningful and exciting new way. We also heard Rihanna was a fan of the show, and we were huge fan of hers, fans of hers. So it was a perfect collision of creativity and fate. Now this also begs the question: Will Bates Motel be ca- casting Marion's sister, played by Vera Miles in the original film, and or her lover Sam, both of whom come looking for her when she disappears at the Bates Motel, and when she and will she re? enact the famous shower scene. Now, Cuse was tight-lipped when he spoke to EW before the show's panel at San Diego Comic-Con, saying, we're going to meet Marion Crane, but what we don't want to do is create the impression that we're redoing the movie because because we're not. She's a very different person in the movie and her story plays out in a different way. Um, I love Bates Motel. I like this show a lot. It's weird. The performances are good. I was so resistant to Bates Motel when I first heard of it because Mm. I was like, ugh, what? Are we just redoing Psycho? And the pilot even turned me off because some of the kids were using cell phones and I was like, there's no cell phones in Psycho. What are you doing? This is weird. But I gave it a chance, and um, I thought season three was excellent. I'm behind on season four, admittedly, but season five is the finale. And so we, I feel like in a way, this is what it had all been building to. Mm. It had all been building to Marion Crane uh, making her way to Bates Motel. And yeah. yet, I'm kind of like, whoa, Rihanna. I, <laughs> I would not have... I would never have guessed that. Right, And I still really don't know how I feel about it. So, Riley, I'll start with you. How do you feel about it? Well, I just have to look at it because I'm not familiar. I haven't seen the series. Um, I kind of probably because I was like kind of like, no, you're not going to step over my my psycho. I don't want to I don't want to know. You know, it just kind of exists for me as a perfect movie. Just that one movie. Um, So when I heard about Rihanna, I was just I felt the first thing that came to my mind was stunt casting. Yeah. And I was just like, okay but but who don't listen to me because i don't watch the the series and and i you know she was in battleship right and i never saw that because the reviews were like don't go see it so i didn't um you know so i'm just kind of like okay if you like it then i i should probably give it a a shot because i trust your judgment on these sorts of series and movies and all that but 
Yeah, the Rihanna thing is just, I'm not a, you know, maybe my age limits me. I, I didn't, I'm not like, oh, Rihanna, woo, yes, you know, but okay. I mean, how's that for an answer? Yeah. Not very good. No, I mean, I get what you're saying. She is, but for, for, for um, to play devil's advocate, advocate, she is in Luke Besson's new movie, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, uh, Vol- Valerian. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. right. So, um, so there's that. It has that going for it. But yeah, I don't know. It's just such a. It is such an iconic role. But then, it, and I think for me, it's it's just more. Maybe it's a. It's like an age thing. I don't know. For me, Marion. But then again, Marion Crane wasn't. I don't know. I don't know why this is weird for me. Yeah. Schnapp, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm. I can't wait for the hit single "Psycho" to come out that Rihanna's <laughs> going to be singing. <laughs> Uh, stab me in the shower. I don't know. It's like uh, I think she's a great actress. I mean, well, all of her stuff that she did on the Saturday Night Live shorts, where she was just you know having yes. fun. Yes. I mean, so when somebody can have fun and make fun of themselves in a in a way, then I'm like, all right, I think they could probably do almost anything if they can be as self-effacing and fun to watch themselves, kind of make fun of themselves. So I don't, I don't mind the casting. I think you know I'm in the same boat. I have to catch up on the series and hearing about how they played season four, how that went. Down, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, now I kind of want to see the mm-hmm. first three just because what they did with season four. So, if this is the fifth and final season, you know, it's like it's a lot of a lot of stuff to watch. Perry, yeah. yeah, I don't watch either, so really, it doesn't mean all that much to me because yeah. I don't know how her casting affects the show, and so therefore, I'm not aware of how it will affect the movie that no, I love so no, much. I mean, but if you had said to me, like, who who do you think would be cast in this role? I think the last person in the world I would have picked was Rihanna. Mm-hmm. And I remember her in Battleship very, very little. I mean, the movie is not a great movie, obviously. Right. But I kind of remember her being perfectly fine. fine. She didn't have a deep character or anything. But she's clearly getting cast left and left mm-hmm. and right in a whole bunch of stuff now. So I am assuming as an actress, she has something to offer. So that idea sounds great to me. But, you know, I'll agree with Riley. It, looks to me like stunt casting i mean rihanna the last season and then that quote too it's like oh she's a fan so let's yeah. just yeah. bring her in because we can well i mean i'm sure she'll be great I, I love that you brought up the snl stuff schnapp because you're right she's always great when she does that and i, I think rihanna seems like a very cool lady so mm-hmm. i maybe it'll be it'll definitely the thing that i will give bates motel is that no matter what they do they don't do what you think they're gonna do when it comes to the psycho knowing psycho so well they they kind of always they they put their own spin on it and they really own that this series yes loves and pays homage to the original film however it stands on its own and and it fits perfectly together with with the original movie and the show so i i'm sure whatever they end up doing will be good it just was a surprising casting totally. is all. Yeah. but i love bates motel so check it out the season four hasn't come to netflix yet but I'm I'm a fan it's a nice pulpy kind of trashy uh, watch but it, it gets messed up you guys <laughs> really yeah. yeah some really great performances in there okay uh, and finally for what's in the box uh, trailers are in no, no short supply this past weekend at San Diego comic-con and both the walking dead and fear the walking dead both posted quick looks at their upcoming seasons while the walking dead didn't show much by way of new footage not surprising considering the cliffhanger season six ended on earlier Earlier this year, there was a nod to a very important character from the comics, Ezekiel. According to the Walking Dead wiki, he is a self-proclaimed king of a community called the Kingdom, the namesake of his own community. Ezekiel has a pet tiger uh, named Shiva, and, and he also has a strong hatred for Negan and the Saviors, which caused Paul to bring Rich Grimes with him to him in the hopes of collaborating to defeat him. Um, and also, Fear the Walking Dead painted a pretty clear picture of what was to come on the back half of season two. This includes introducing a new character, Luciana, played by Denai Garcia. Described as a badass soldier within her group, the character may prove to challenge the audience relationship with the walkers in that she sees them as the next step in human evolution and perhaps isn't as terribly scared of the undead. It won't be a tame second half of the season, though, with showrunner David Erickson saying, we're going to see a level of violence and intensity in the second half that we haven't seen before. All right, team, so so our favorite uh, AMC zombies, we got some previews. Boy, everybody was, t- let's start with The Walking Dead. Everybody was very tight-lipped about The Walking Dead. I was at the, we were at the breakfast. Yeah, we did the breakfast. Um, you can watch our reaction video up on 
quieter video, but Riley and I were there. And one thing that I noticed, I think I even leaned over to you, you did. and said, I know what you're going to say, was that uh, Glenn didn't say a word. Not one word. And nobody asked him a question. And I was just, and I, I could have asked something, but I was just so fascinated. I just literally sat back. And I was just watching him the whole time. I mean, and they were asking, like, I looked. I actually went through, because this was a panel of 18 people, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it was Robert Robert Kirkman and DA. It was um, Scott Gimple. But then it was the entire cast well, of The Walking Dead. they do have Day. a bajillion series regulars. So yeah. I guess do. that's what happens. But so what was really interesting was they talked for 40 minutes. The audience asked general questions. Do you have a favorite story? Do you have a who would do this? Blah, 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 blah. Stephen did not say a word. What was his expression like? Did it, was did like it look like he was just not listening he, or, or did he look like uncomfortable? Well, he looked like he was not really listening. I mean, he just looked like seriously, he was just kind of like, did and it look like sat, he got hit in the head with a baseball bat? It could have it, been. It, it kind, he sat on the end too. He was uh, the last person in the chair. It now, was it was odd. Is it is it maybe was that all done by the handlers to like throw us all off? Because you never know. Listen, everybody's pointing to Glenn. So which I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around because of the big dumpster fiasco. So all I don't right. know if they'll do that or not. But yeah, curious. Very curious. Very curious. Indeed. When does that come back? October. Uh, October. Oh, it's not still too far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because I'll say this. When they revealed the trailer, the, the Ezekiel thing got me geeking out because I'm a big comic book fan of this. So that was the big takeaway for me, if they weren't going to obviously give us who it was. But I liked the uh, recapping of all the characters, yeah. kind of playing with our emotions at the beginning. So... Mm. We'll see. It's going to be interesting. What about you two? Any thoughts? Did we do the trailer reaction together? We sure did. did. Yeah, we did. I, we I did. did. I forgot so to mention that. so many with uh, Dennis and Wendy that I can't even remember anymore. But I am all for the Walking Dead trailer. At first, yeah. I was watching it because the beginning part of it is all about, oh, look back at all these characters, and one of them is going to die. So it felt very manipulative, mm. especially yeah, yeah. given all the talk after the season six finale. And I was getting a little annoyed, but then all of a sudden, when it cut to the actual footage from the new season, I'm like, oh. Well, obviously they can't show me anything because yeah. then you're going to have people picking out oh yep. this yeah. person's here that they can't die then so you know given that it was still a very good trailer and we still got a pretty good deal of footage yeah. you know even though that they couldn't show 75% of the cast there but I'm pumped I don't read the comics like you do but no. this this reveal I was still aware of who Ezekiel was I'm <laughs> digging the tiger the tiger looks great you know yeah. digital tiger it's a lot of pressure right there to make it look right and I like it so far, yep. so can't come soon enough. I want to know. Oh boy. If you couldn't well, tell, because I was pressing you about Steven, I need to know. Oh yeah, I know. It's it's really funny. It was he it was, was just like not one word, no. wow. not a single word. He didn't even say hi. <laughs> nope. He was just like. He literally did not say anything. Yeah. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, Snap. Mm -hmm. How about well, you? I avoided the trailer. Because oh, I don't want to see anything. Okay. I just want to see that premiere. And yeah. I was like, I would just like, I knew they weren't going to give away who gets clocked, you know. Yeah, of course. But uh, I just don't want to see anything. That's enough for me, that picture. Can, so. can we do a, a special Collider Nightmares bet? Who gets it? Oh, boy. Yeah. Who well, is I'm, your call for I'm getting it? Right now, definitely betting on Glenn. Oh. Yep. I am backing up Perry 1000%. Glenn gets it. I'm going to go in a different direction. Daryl. I think Daryl. See, I, I thought, don't know why. No, There's no, something. I was a thousand percent with Daryl. Yeah. Up until he, he, what you guys just said about Glenn. No, I'm serious. I was yeah, like, yeah. Daryl no. bites it, but then at the at the actual panel that he didn't say anything, that he looked glum. I bet they were like, "No, Daryl's gonna bite it." And then they started shooting the new season. They're like, "Actually, we're gonna stick to comics, and you die." Right. Well, I'm wondering what the the actual Hall H panel was because I didn't get to see mm. that, so I don't know if he actually spoke on that panel. Right. But we'll see. But yeah, I I think because Daryl made some comments a while ago that right. kind of hint. He doesn't hint. I mean, he's not going to hint or you know say anything about it. But I don't know. It's just a feeling. I think I the get. fan base would lose their mind. I think like, so think too. But I think they're going to do that after the dumpster issue. Yeah. I feel like killing him would just send people. I'm sorry. I take yeah. back what I said. I'm not. I'm not again. I'm not. Daryl. I'm a Oh yes, I got you. I'm, no, I'm sw no. switching. I was a See, but that's what they have to they have to do. Nobody's safe in this world. So I have to they, they, the only person I feel is safe right now is Rick. Always Rick for a Ooh. while at least until they have to get sweeps or something and I don't know. All right, I'm going to go I'm going to go Maggie. 
Mm. Maggie. I'm going to go Maggie. Ooh, you're going to switch Ooh. that up. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Ouch. I want that to show in two me. seasons, but I'm going to go Maggie. Wow. That would kill me because she's pregnant. Yeah, I know. I'm, oh my gosh. But then again, that 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 <sighs> gives The Walking Dead bigger balls than it's ever had. That's right. I said it. So yeah. if they if they killed a pregnant lady, not Bam. happening. Yeah. Not going to happen. Well, listen, if it's either one of those three, we're all going to lose our mind. I can't wait to find out who it is. Yeah. I don't even watch the show well, anymore. Maybe, and I can't wait to Maybe find out. it's Michonne now that she's no off way. to go film Black Panther. No Whoa. No. I don't know. I like no. Michonne a lot. No what well, she just turns out to be some dude hanging out in the corner that we never talked to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is like, that's a big reveal. Yeah. Sure. Um, and fi- a quick thoughts on Fear the Walking Dead trailer. I love this trailer for, for the back half of Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. I think, and I love that they're taking it, well, not taking it to Mexico, but spending real time in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, the the actual Actress Denai uh, uh, Garcia, I spoke with her on the Nerdist stage this weekend, and she mentioned that, you know, uh, like in her experience with Dia de los Muertos and things like that, you know, the dead isn't necessarily a bad thing in in that culture. And so I love, and, and she said that will play into her character's response and reaction Ooh. to the walkers, I which like I that. think is so interesting and kind of cool. So. Yeah, no, I really like the trailer too, and I'm I'm like halfway between uh, from finishing the second season. Mm-hmm. It's still, I, but see, here's the thing, and I just realized it when when I was looking at the show notes. I think they'll get me sooner or later. Right. I think they're going to finally hit that moment where you're like, okay, now I'm in. I'm like, right now, I'm just holding on because I I do like the characters. I feel it's really well done. I like that they're in Mexico. Mm-hmm. I lo- I loved the idea of getting on a boat and like trying to look for safe haven. So you know. I'm still I'm still with it. And if I may interject, The Walking Dead took a couple seasons to it find sure its did. footing yeah. too. You know, yeah. and a lot of showrunners. So just saying. How about yeah. you guys? Any initial reactions to this trailer? I it was it was fine. I wanna catch up. I watched uh, I binged all of season one and I think that I liked the show more than most because I binged it all mm. in one shot, so it felt like I was getting enough and it wasn't too slow. But then I just, you know, got distracted, sure. did something else. But watching this trailer, I did a trailer reaction, I I think with Dennis. <laughs> did I do this one with you? I don't know, but you I did a trailer reaction with someone for this no, as well. No, we touched on it with the did, walking dead. Oh, yeah, okay, we did, that was we the, did plan. the combo platter dead people. <laughs> yeah. So but just as a piece of promotional material, I like the tone of it. I like what I saw. I like what it teases. I like the music that kicks in. Something like that automatically gets me pumped for something. So there's going to come a time, probably in the very near future, where I will catch up with season two as well. Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat, but even f- farther behind. I've only wa- watched the pilot, the see the first episode. But I felt like I always felt like Fear the Walking Dead just wasn't on the same playing field. I mean, that could be wrong as far as you know the Walking Dead because I was already invested in the Walking Dead. Um, seeing this trailer though made me want to go back and see. It's not like I have to go back and watch 400 episodes. It's like literally like 18 episodes or yeah. something. But made me interested because all the way they were developing this group of characters, I was like, oh my god, it's all brand new characters that I don't know anything about, but in the world of zombies. Why am I not watching this? That's what that's what this trailer made me feel like. I'm missing out on some really cool, crazy end of the world zombie madness. So I'm gonna ch- definitely go back watch everything up until this new season pops off. Good, AMC, music to AMC's ears. They cut a trailer that makes you wanna watch. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move into our jump scare this week. So this is, um, ooh, she's terrifying. Another yeah. um, oh, another discussion debate topic this week. Uh, so just so you guys know, I, uh, being the responsible showrunner that I am, totally forgot to talk about Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise last week. <laughs> Whoops, sorry guys. Um, hey, so happens. it happens. Well, it's funny because, you know, the the news came out uh, the day after we taped Nightmares and then the next week I just was like, oh, we didn't talk about that. Whoops. Yeah. So here he is. This was in Entertainment Weekly. This is Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise the Clown in the new movie, uh, the new film adaptation of Stephen King's It. And basically what I wanted to talk to you guys about or what I thought we could discuss is the idea that I wonder if this movie can live up to fan expectations, right? Yeah. Because first of all, if you are of a certain age, you were probably scarred for life by Tim Curry as Pennywise in the first place, right? right. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that, I, I'm certainly not beholden to that miniseries because I'd actually argue that he is the only good part of that mini, that stands yep. the test of time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you had this very 
public discussion about Carrie Fukunaga adapting this movie. And if you were like me, you were like, oh my God, a gift from the horror heavens. Like this was exactly what I wanted. And then poof, gone, not so much. Uh, then, so now we're in production. Finn Wolfhard, who we love from Stranger Things, yep. is um, is definitely one of the kids. And, uh, and now we've seen the clown. So I put it to you, panel. Can this movie live up to our horror expectations? Never say never. Okay. With anything. And <clears throat> and I'll put that out there, but one way or the other. You could think something's gonna be really good and you know, there's so many steps to filmmaking from writing the script, things can change during production, things could change in post. You could have the best idea in the world and if it's just not executed properly or or it just doesn't come together for whatever reason down the line, it could fall apart. So I feel like I'm giving this the benefit of the doubt because why not? I mean, look, he looks freaking creepy. So yeah. do you guys like the makeup? Where? Yes. Yeah. 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 Love it. Yeah, I, I love, love the it. makeup. And I mean, just look at the look in his eyes. I mean, <laughs> creepy. That, well, yeah. that, that isn't just a makeup job there. That's an expression on an actor's face. And, right. you know, even though it's only one image, I'm going to hold strong to that right now and think that this guy could pull it off. Also, because I've seen what he's capable of on Hemlock Grove. And I know this guy can go the distance with this character. So I'm really hyped about it. You know, things could not pan out, but I'm I'm gonna keep telling myself that this could be it because you know you you just said it too. If you rewatch um it now, it doesn't it's not all that scary no, it anymore. That. It's something that is in a position where it could be remade and could be remade better, where we can bring a new audience in at this point. So. I have all the hope in the world. I'm keeping my fingers crossed so, so tight. I want this to be great. I want this to be creepy. Enough pieces are in line right now that I am. I have high hopes. All right, boys. Perry, you have won me over. Oh, <laughs> boy. Your positive attitude has made me think differently. I am going to trust it. It, the movie, it. I'm going to trust it. <laughs> no, I, okay. This is what I'll say. When posing that question, Clark, I was, I would have said, oh, my God, yes, this is going to be a home run because of Fukunaga. I was like, and even the ca when they cast Will Poulter, is that how you yeah, pronounce Poulter, his last name? Yeah, I was, I was like, well done. Like that was just out of left field casting. All of a sudden, I just saw him as that. It was different. It really, it really distinguished itself from sure. the Tim Curry uh, Pennywise. I was like, wow. When it all fell apart, so did my hope. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but like I said, I'm going to go back to what Perry said, and why not? We, we, it, you never know with productions, with these studio movies, it is a studio movie, anything can go wrong, but then there's those times when they hit and they hit it out of the park. Maybe this can be a movie that's up there with the greatest horror movies ever made. I'm hoping so because I'm rereading the book again. I know you are, I'm Clark. I'm reading it too. Um, and I love the book so much. The book is so good. So why not? Let's get a damn good it. I mean, yeah, I, I want to be optimistic too, but I think you just said something that makes me a little nervous, and that's a studio <laughs> horror movie. An yeah, R-rated studio horror movie with kids. Which now, was why he left in the first place. That's why Trick or Treat wasn't released for years. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I mean, let's be honest here. We got to do some real damage to children. That's the material that we're working with <sighs> yeah. here. And, you know, bringing it back to Stranger Things, so a lot of people have you know made the argument that Stranger Things things is like a loose a loose interpretation of it right I mean and you could draw parallels it's obviously I would argue more heavily influenced by Stephen King than Steven Spielberg sure, absolutely but when I spoke with the Duffer brothers on the set they told me that they went in and they tried to pitch for it and the studio was not having it and basically they they didn't want to let kids lead a movie they didn't want to let kids be real kids and have real character arcs and um, put them in real danger and so what did the Duffers do well, they went off and made Stranger Things. Well, those are all mortifying reasons to say no to someone for an it movie. Yeah. Oh I, my God. I I know. That's what I'm saying. Like I just there is something there's something that makes me very very nervous about an R-rated studio movie that kills children. Yeah. Uh, but in, in 2016, 2017, Schnepp, do you have thoughts on this? I think this is going to surpass the original It. Because remember, the original It was a TV right. series. Yeah. Television series told in, I think it was two parts. Yes. Two parts, um, yeah. And it was, you know, it's going to be way scarier, way more intense, way more violent, way more filled with killing kids than those the TV movie ever could possibly be. 
Because remember, it was also made, you know, over 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like when the standards and practices and all these kinds of repressive, like you can't have this in it. So think about how much more heightened it's going to be if you watch the it television series compared to this it the movie version which is also being told in two parts so i think it's going to be better than the television version by far sure well sure i would hope so <laughs> um yeah and i'll t i know it sounds like i'm the debbie downer on the panel but this makeup didn't quite do it for me this to me looks a little bit like a marionette doll like a hmm. creepy like a creepy gesture jester doll or something and yeah. i think but and and to be fair and i want to like weigh both sides um one of the criticisms of this was well you know it's it's very slick it's very polished it's not like this like greasy gri you know like right. dangerous kind of or like gr grimy dude in the street that like is dressed as a clown i mean mm. i know and granted you can go either way with right. it um but but yeah, I mean, it's. I'm gonna be. I can't wait for the first trailer. Wait till you see his teeth. Oh yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I see yeah. him. I'm very curious to see the teeth. That'll I, probably make or break the look. Yeah, yep. definitely. It's important. Definitely. Ooh, it's gonna be interesting. All right. Well, we'll keep you posted for sure on all of the latest it news. But let's move on to your Twitter questions. Perfect. Okay. So Love first it. up, Daniel Quillen asks, Do you think there will be a sequel to Beetlejuice, and would you want it? I guess I'll start because I sighed the loudest. Yeah, you sighed the loudest. Um, at first, when, when I heard about it, I got excited, and then it's been so long since that rumor or news. It seems like every time Tim Burton makes a movie, somebody asks about this Beetlejuice 2 thing. Right. I think we need to let it go. That's what I feel like. I don't think that we'll ever be able to capture the magic again with Beetlejuice again. It just seems like everybody's kind of doing their own thing now. Yeah. I mean, I think Tim Burton wants to make other movies before he even revisits Beetlejuice 2. And it's, you know, it seems like every time we pull up a really great 80s movie and do a sequel that takes place 20 years, it's just kind of like, eh, you know, but you never say never, like you said, Perry, with an it movie being like made and, you know, all the things, all the pieces fall into place perfectly. Who knows if it happens and, and it's a beautiful, funny, awesome return to form for Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice, then I'll eat my words, but I just don't think we need it anymore. All right, guys. Never say uh, never with the likelihood of a movie getting made either. Right, right? Exactly. We've been talking about this for how many years now? And Over it's 30 years. Yeah. And, it's, and it's more popular. It's a more popular topic recently because Tim Burton has Miss Peregrine and Winona Ryder is in Stranger Things. So there are quotes floating around there Michael now. Michael is the vulture. And, yeah. Yeah. I and think Birdman. The, the quotes that Collider.com had it most certainly did not sound like Winona Ryder thinks this thing is going to come together. She's aware of it, but it definitely, I didn't get the impression that anything is solidified in any respect. Right. Whether or not I'd want it, it's Beetlejuice. It's hard for me to say I don't want more Beetlejuice, but at yeah. the same time, I mean, we're, it's the same question we just addressed with it. You run the risk of it fla falling flat, not working, ruining, and it's Stranger Things too, ruining the original that did something so well, but then again, you know, it could be a Mad Max where we could wind up with something so, so special that we didn't expect. So. Or it could be a Blair Witch. Yeah, the exactly. sequel that yeah, exactly. nobody was asking for 16 years later. And I know you guys haven't seen it yet, but you will, and it's awesome. Actually, Spider-Man Homecoming is actually Beetlejuice 2. They're just right. going to just say that out yeah, at the premiere. Beetlejuice, 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 yeah. Homecoming. Exactly. Yep. Um, <laughs> I think they should just drop it and not even talk about making Beetlejuice 2 anymore. I mean, it is over 30 years. If you want to see Beetlejuice, watch the original. Mm -hmm. And then if you really yeah. need more Beetlejuice, there's like, I think they did like two seasons of a Beetlejuice cartoon. I used the to love that. I'm just saying, saying it's like, if you're like dying for more Beetlejuice, there is a way, you know, I think there's some fan fiction online you could read, but no one's like, you know, pounding down the doors, like crying about how come there's no Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian or any of the other weird script ideas that are out there that you can find out about. So, you know, I think they should just let it go. I agree. Yeah. I am not interested in Beetlejuice part two. Sorry, Danielle. Okay, next up. Daryl Pennison asks, name an A-list star whose breakout horror work is still your favorite film of theirs. Mine is Nicole Kidman in Dead Calm. What a mm. good reference. Um, <laughs> anybody anybody have anything that jumped out at them? Because this is kind of a stumper for me. I mean, uh, I had a couple. Matthew McConaughey in Texas Chainsaw 4. Totally. Just kidding. With Renee Whoa. Zellweger. No, I'm just kidding. No. You could say the same thing about Viggo Mortensen, too. 
three. Oh, that's right. Three. That's right. Yep. Yeah. There's a, I mean, I like there's it. a bunch of like stinkers where it's like not a stinker, but it's like they were like bit roles like Kevin Bacon and Johnny Depp. Like their first appearances were in horror films, but it's not like, man, he really stood out for that three seconds he was on camera before he right. died, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's hard to answer this question and actually play by the rules. Right. Because I, every single time I see an ice skate, I think of Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt in Halloween H two O. But like, obviously, that wasn't his breakout right. role. And I also think I wrote down Elizabeth Olsen in Silent House. Although I believe Martha Marcy May Marlene might have come before. So is that really her breakout role? And then I, I have a lot of fun with Emily Mortimer in Scream Three, and she wasn't a particularly well known name before that movie came out. Not that that movie was the reason you know she became a house old name but it was one of her earlier ones and then this one it might not count as a horror movie but i was thinking Kristen stewart in panic room that's yeah, that's kind that's, of a, kind a of horror works. thriller and that and i think that was one of her first yeah, movies sure that kind of put her on the path to where she is now oh i, I go the two big ones and that's jamie lee curtis in halloween mm -hmm. which is still my favorite movie of hers and uh, sigourney weaver and alien mm -hmm. those are my two you i mean win. Yeah, yeah i i i mean but it's like i thought that was so obvious like i i didn't know if we were if we get because i thought we got a twitter question too it's like you can't say jamie lee curtis for like <laughs> you know, uh, like a, a breakout horror performance. Oh. So I remember going back and forth on Twitter on that one. But yeah, those are the two that stick out for me. Mm. One of my favorite of his performances is Christian Bale in American Psycho. Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that that's one of his greatest performances. It's so nuanced. And um, I know that it's a young man, you know, taking on taking on a, you know, he, he grew a lot as an actor, obviously, since then. But I just think that's wonderful. And also, I love Virginia Madison, Madsen in Candyman. I oh, like yeah. her Good performance. Call. It's a oh, lot yeah. in yeah. that one. Um, so those those would probably be my two. All right, and finally, um, Cathal T. Coleman. I was going to chime in there. Oh, I didn't, sorry, I thought you said, you, I'm sorry. I was just going to say Jeffrey Combs from The Reanimator. Good choice. Nice. Very good choice. I'm sorry, Schnapp. I thought that you had said. I apologize. Um, okay, so Cathal T. Coleman asks, who are some non-horror directors you'd like to see tackle the genre? Um, I can go first. Mine's Matt Vaughn. Ooh. I want a Matthew Vaughn That'd horror be great. movie like now, you guys. Mm -hmm. Schnapp, how about you go first? Uh, Terrence Malick popped into my head. Ooh. It would be like weird. It would probably be people whispering over images and then somebody <laughs> dies. But I, I wouldn't mind seeing that or Inuratu. You know? Oh, like, I mean, call. you could say his last movie was kind of like a horror movie with Leonardo mm -hmm. and Tom Hardy, but I'd like to see a straight up horror film from him. Good yeah, choice. there was a rumor that went around a while ago, so I'm going to use this. But Wes Anderson doing a horror yes. movie. Oh. Yes. It's like I there was some kind of statement he made where he's like, I have an idea for a horror movie and I want to do it. And I went, give that to me now, please. That mm -hmm. would be so amazing. I don't even know what it would look like. It'd be nonsense. And I would be lapping it up the whole time. So, yeah. That's, that'd be mine. I wrote down Alex Garland. Ex oh, Machina. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good G one. Given the fact that that has such a horrific quality to it in certain moments of the movie, but it, it's obviously not a horror movie, I think he'd do great work there. And I also wrote down Joe Cornish. Sure. Like, where is he since Attack the Block? He's, I knew he, he wrote uh, Ant-Man, but right. or he, he was part of that in some respect. But he directed Attack the Block, and now he hasn't directed anything since. I mean, that is such a, a fun... A fun monster movie. He should be directing mm, more right now. His name is in the mix on something. I remember just hearing about him. He's up. He's doing something right now. I, I don't started. Know if it's a I film. started Googling, and I don't know if I saw anything he was attached to as a director. Maybe it was something he's writing, though. Maybe. I'd also vote. Um, I'd like to see a horror comedy from Paul Feig. I feel like the opening mm. scene in Ghostbusters was great. I love that scare, that five-minute sequence in like the museum. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great, and mm. I loved the way the ghosts look looked. So I, I'd like to see something from him. Him. I think he's got it in him. Um, cool, guys. Well, that about wraps it up for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let's go ahead and thank our panel. Perry, where can people find you on the internet? You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff, right here on Collider Nightmares every Tuesday and on Best of the Week every Saturday. And Mr. John Schnepp. Hey, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, and uh, watch my Collider Heroes, which is on tomorrow, and Nightmares.
Wonderful. And Mr. Mark Riley? At Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll be here next week, so can't wait. Wonderful. Um, and I wanted to mention that if you live in Southern California, come by Midsummer Scream this weekend in the Long Be at the Long Beach Convention Center. It's a genre convention, horror convention, haunts. It's all about Halloween, and uh, it's really fun. I'll be moderating a, pa moderating a panel called All Hallows Eve, Halloween in Pop Culture at 1.15 p.m. on Saturday. John Schnepp will be there with mm -hmm. me. Nice. Uh, and uh, I will also be moderating moderating the Jim Henson Creature Shop panel Ooh. at 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. So if you're interested in tickets, you can get 30% off by using the code Collider at midsummerscream.org. Org. Also, don't forget to watch Movie Talk tomorrow morning because it's great. And uh, you can find me on the internet at Clark Wolf, Clark with an E, Wolf with an E. And until next time, we will see you in your nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider. <laughs>